In this video, we're going to discuss how you calculate the probability of finding an electron between two points on a ring using the particle on a ring wave function. All right? um, I will preface this by saying if you see this problem on a test, this should be a gimme question. These are actually fairly easy, probably the easiest of all of them, I think. And the solution to this is actually very uh, straightforward and actually very um, understandable, I think. So this is kind of what the problem could say. Calculate the probability of finding a pi electron between carbons 1 and 3 of benzene, which I have right here. So here's carbon 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. The challenge with doing this is trying to figure out what the limits of integration are, because we're actually calculating angles of phi, and so we don't have our typical four corners, we actually have six. So it's not just as easy as zero, pi over two, pi, two pi over, th or three pi over two. It's not that simple. So how do you calculate this? Well, let me ask you a question. How many radians are in a circle? Two pi. How many segments do we have here in benzene? Six. So if I wanted to calculate the angle between two adjacent points, I need to take two pi and divide by six. 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. So for every single segment I go, I have to add pi over 3. So if I arbitrarily set my carbon 1 as 0 radians, then 2 would be 1 pi over 3, and 3, this would be 2 pi over 3. So when I do this integral to calculate the probability, it's going to be between 0 and 2 pi over 3. That's how you determine what the limits of integration are for something like benzene. If there were a different number of points on here, then you would just take 2 pi and divide by that, whatever, however number of points there are. Okay. So what is my normalized wave function for particle on a ring? So the wave function with respect to phi is the square root of 1 over 2 pi times the exponential of negative i k phi. Okay. So what is my probability? Well, remember I have to take the square of the wave function. Okay, So it's the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3, since I'm calculating the probability of finding it between carbons 1 and 3, as we discussed, of xi star of phi times xi of phi d phi. Okay? That is my integral. Now I can put in my wave functions. Now, remember, unlike particle in a box, where we didn't really have to worry about the complex conjugate, I have to take the complex conjugate of one of the wave functions right here. So that means I have to take the negative of whatever the i is. So it's already negative, so it's actually going to become positive. So my first xi, the xi star, will be square root of 1 over 2 pi times e to the positive i k phi. And then I'm just going to throw in the other wave function, square root of 1 over 2 pi times e to the negative i k phi integrated over d phi from 0 to 2, three, two pi over 3. Okay, now I can pull these two square roots because they're constants outside of the integral, and when I do that, they're going to be multiplied together and the square root sign disappears. So I'm going to have a 1 over 2 pi out in front of the integral times the integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3 times the product of these exponential functions d phi. Now, with exponential functions, as long as the base is the same and the base is e in both of these, I can actually combine them together and take the sum of the function that's inside the exponential function. All right, so it becomes e to the positive i k phi plus negative i k phi, or phi. I keep flipping them, it's okay. But positive i k phi minus i k phi, and that's what's inside the exponential function d phi. Now, if you take i k phi minus i k phi, this obviously becomes zero inside the exponential function. And what is any, any number to the zero power, including e? e to the 0 is 1. So I no longer have an exponential function. All I'm left with is d phi. Okay? That's a pretty easy integral to do. It just becomes phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So the probability is 1 over 2 pi times phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi over 3. And using fundamental theorem of calculus, that becomes 2 pi over 3 minus 0. Now, that's basically 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi over 3. Notice the pi's cancel, the 2's cancel, and your probability is 1 third, which as a percentage would be 33.3 repeating percent. Okay, now let's think about it. What's the probability of finding it between 1 and 3? Well, it has to be 1 third, right? Because this 
span of length of the ring, right, is one third of it. So if I start from three and go to five, that's another third, that's two thirds total, and five back to one, that's my last third, so three thirds. So when you're dealing with these aromatic compounds, they can actually be fairly simple and straightforward problems because you can actually use logic to figure out if your answer is right, okay? So what's the probability of finding it between one and three? Well, it should be one third because that's one third of the length around the ring, right? If I asked you what's the probability of finding it between one and four, that's one half because going around from one to four is half of the length. What's the probability of finding it between one and five? two-thirds, right? Probability between one and two, one-sixth. And I guarantee you, regardless of the energy level of whatever K is, I don't care what K is, it could be, it could be one, it could be two, it could be negative one, it could be negative two, I don't care what it is. Remember, K can be any of these values. It will always just default to a simple logic problem because when you multiply these wave functions together and, and the complex conjugate of one of them, they completely cancel to e to the zero, which is one, and all you're left with is d phi. So that's why these are about the easiest problems. Now, you should, on an exam, show your work, but you can always go back and just think about it, all right? Now, this only becomes this simple when you're just doing probability. If you're doing an expectation value, we know we have to throw some other thing in there. It can make it complicated. We'll do those in another video. But hopefully this made sense about how you calculate the probability around the ring. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos. In the next video, we're going to use the same model and calculate the energy um, of an electron, and we're also going to calculate its momentum, its angular momentum, that is. All right? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.